Hey there. So, in this lesson, we're going to talk about simple and compound interest and annuity. Okay, so we should talk simple interest. Uh, we should talk about simple interest first. So, it's the money earned on a starting principal. So, um, it's essentially the formula is pretty simple. It's principal multiplied by R, which is the rate, and that's about it. And if you want to do by time, then you can multiply by, by time as well, if there's time in it. Again, uh, the best way to understand these lessons or to understand the problem, understand the situation is to do problems. Okay, so let's look at the first problem, example one, the interest in sales tax. And I wrote down here, use sim the simple interest formula, because if you read the problem, Nowhere does it say compounding. If it says compounding, then you're probably using one of the other formulas. But because it doesn't say compounding, you know it's going to be a simple interest formula. Okay, so let's get started. Let's uh, do the first problem here. So uh, we're going to put in our formula, and we're going to find this. We're going to find the interest for uh, one year. Before we do that, we should um, no. Let's do the interest for one year. So will be I for interest equals and uh, the formula is P for principal just so you know your principal is the initial amount the starting amount that you're gonna put into the bank or, or whatever you want to put it into so it's the starting amount which is forty five thousand dollars the interest and you can whenever you have a percentage whenever you have a percentage you should always convert it into a decimal form seven five that's it in its decimal form. And again, this is per year. And um, you want to find the end of three months. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the interest for one year. Then we're going to divide it by 12 to find the interest per month. And then we're going to multiply by three to get three months. So uh, our formula, P, R, well, T. So this is just for per year. So in this case, T is going to be time. So I'm going to write down over here, and this is for you. I'm going to put down um, maybe a Y for the interest for the year. Okay, so we have 4,500 or 4,500. Now the interest for the year, 75, 0.075. Oops. And then... Again, this is just one year. So you don't really have to put the one there, but it's sort of like assumed there. So that's one year. And I'm going to drop this into my calculator. And I will find that I have about 337.5. This is dollars per year. So that's how much you're making per year. Well, let's find out how, what the interest is per month. So I'm going to put the M here. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to divide um, this by 12 to find it per month. So let me just put this in my calculator and it'll be 28125. Uh, so it'll be a dollar sign. $28 and. One two five one two five. Now that's per month. Let me just spell that properly. Month. So we have the interest per month, and we know it's at. For, we want to know what is it for three months. So I'm just going to use regular I and no subscript. And essentially, it is the interest per month times three because there's three months. Oh, let me just go down and see if I can. There we go. Let's put our number here, which is I'm gonna put, a, put in brackets twenty eight point one two five multiplied by three, and that should give you eighty four. Uh, eighty four thirty eight eighty. I'm gonna put a dollar sign here. 84.38. So, 
and this is for every, so I'm, I'm gonna say here for every three months let's put an M there there we go so first problem done simple interest so yeah um, let's look at the next problem now I changed the formula a bit to be more simpler but in this form the uh, this form the formula you have to uh, I and N is going to change based on what it's compounded by because this is a compounding interest formula so you look for the word compounding and you have to change I and N according to uh, there's other ways of doing it but I find that this is a more simpler way so compounding interest in sense just to um, it is essentially you put money one time into some sort of bank or some somewhere one time and uh, over or short over a certain amount of time it gets compounded multiple times until you get your final amount so it's just one payment and over a couple of years it gets compounded a couple times per, per year or multiple times and then you get your final amount so again it's just you're only investing one time okay so um best way to understand this is banking just so you know, this is actually used in finance, population growth, and radioactive decay. But in our case, we're using it for finance. So let's read example two. DJ invests $3,000 for three years in a bond that earns 6% interest per year. And it's compounded quarterly. What does quarterly mean? Quarterly means uh, every three months or basically divided by four. So the interest, like in one year, there's four quarterlies. That's what it means. So he's divided by four. So, uh, and it's asking you how much money will he have at the end of three years? Okay. So again, uh, the very first thing you should do is write down the information you have. I'm going to say the principal is, well, the more important information is I and N because you have to do a calculation for that. But I'm just writing this down just for your reference. So I, okay, again, this is 6% per year but it's compounded quarterlies so you need interest in quarterlies so I'm gonna write down here the interest 0.6 percent and I'm gonna divide it so this is per year right now and I'm gonna convert it into quarterlies by dividing it by four so this is per year and if I divide it by four I'm gonna have the interest in quarterlies which is zero let me put my calculator 0 0.06 divided by four gives me uh, 0.015 simple enough so now this is in quarterlies the I is in quarterlies and let's find how many periods they are so we have three years but how many period how many periods in three years? well it's done in quarterly so you have three years and there is four quarterlies in one year right so there's three years and there's four quarterlies in one year Therefore, we should have a number of 12 or well, 12 periods altogether. So we have so we have all the information we need. All we need to do now is put this into our compounding interest formula here. So I'm going to say A equals P bracket 1 plus I N to the power of N. So we have $3,000. 1 plus 0 0.015 and n is 12 and we should have uh let me just take a look here we should have 3586 yeah 3586.853 586. 8 5 and uh, that's in dollars the amount oops let's erase that there we go in dollars okay good so the first one's done that's compound just co simple compounding interest and you use that when there's only just one payment that's compounded multiple uh, multiple times okay so let's take a look at the next problem Okay, 
Let's, the next problem here is annuity. Now, to understand annuity, uh, you have to understand that annuity means multiple payments. Like you're, you're paying things off. Um, not paying things off, but you're, you're making regular payments. That's why you have an R here. So the definition payments that are made at the end of each compounding period, the amount of annuity is the sum of regular deposits, and it's commonly used to accumulate funds. So the word, the key word is accumulate. So you keep on, you're making multiple payments and you keep on building and building, building. So that's when you use this formula, this is the, uh, the ordinary simple annuity or just amount annuity. You're just, you're building, you're getting a bigger number each time. So you're putting money in the bank on a regular basis and your, your account is getting bigger and bigger. That's when you use this formula. When your account is getting bigger, so we're making you're actually making money. Um, and there's these are some conditions for the annuity formula. Uh, the intervals have to be at the same time as the compounding period. The payment is at the end of each compounding period, and the first payment at the end, uh, made at the end of the compounding period. So, yeah, just uh, a little bit of um, uh, stuff. So example. So here's example three. We're using the table for this. And uh, it says here, suppose um, 450 are, is deposited at the end of each quarter in 1.5 years. So this this here is basically um, this here, except it's done manually. And when you do it manually, it can take you a very long time. You had to make this entire table, but you have to, you have to understand what the, what's going on in the table. So it says here, it's uh, 450 is deposited into accounts at the, every month or at the end of each quarter for 1.5 years and in an investment account that earns 10% per year compounded quarterly. So look at the word compounded. It's compounded quarterly. So you everything has to be in quarterlies. So the interest right here, the interest itself, it's a uh, 10% and you do that in quarterlies and you have this, this is in quarterlies and the period, which is N, it's also in quarterlies, and you have basically six periods. So it's one point five years, right? And you multiply and quarterlies is by four, right? Quar so every year is four quarterlies. So one point five times four gives you six periods that you have here. So if you look at this table, and the way this table is made is that you put your quarters going downwards here, and you have your deposits. These are your regular deposits. So you're making about six payments, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six payments of 450. So starting balance, you have nothing. This is the first month, right? So starting balance, you have nothing. The interest is earned because you don't have no money in your account. So you, you can't calculate any interest. And you make your deposit into your account and now you have 450 in your account. Now for the second month, what happens, so this number gets pushed over to the starting balance of the second month and this, balance here you it collects interest so one month has gone by and you you collected interest sorry not one month one period or one quarterly has gone by and you're collecting interest on this this here's the interest so basically this number multiplied by 0 0.025 because again percentages have to be in uh in decimal form and you get this number here 11.25 and then you make your deposits and then all these three numbers gets added onto here. That's your balance at the end. And it goes on to the next month. So in your third month, right, now your balance is bigger and you're collecting interest on this number. And your interest is here. Again, you multiply this number by this, 0 0.025. And then you get 22 plus another deposit. And now your ending balance has gotten bigger. And again, you keep going on and on and on until you're at the end of the six, six periods or six quarterlies. And this is your ending balance here. And this is the amount, uh, well, if you, if you didn't have any interest, this is the amount that you would have accumulated without the interest. And here is all the interest that you accumulated. And yeah, so know how to do this table. Um, it can be useful. And so, Sarah, the amount of annuity is this much, is 2,874.48 cents. And the interest earned is 174.48 cents, dollars or cents. Um, 
So that's it. Um, you probably should do the next, the next one, the next one here, the last example here. And let's take a look at it. Okay, let's read this. So, uh, in the end of an annuity, in example one, 450 is deposited at the end uh, at each quarter for 1.5 years at 10% compounded uh, quarterly. So, we're doing this now manually. And the way we, so it's asking them, what's the amount of annuity? Okay, so the first thing you got to do is always, you have to identify what your regular payments are. Your regular payments are, it says deposit at the end of each quarter. So this is the regular payments. It is uh, $450 is your regular payments. Now, we're working, in, we're working in quarterlies. So it's compounded quarterly. So everything has to be in quarterlies. So 10%. Uh, we get to convert that because this is 10% per year, but we have to convert that into quarterlies. So what we do is we have 0 0.10 because that's 10% is in, this is 10% in decimal form divided by four. And I believe we got uh, 0 0.02, what was it? 0 0.025, 0 0.025. That's the interest in quarterlies. And the period is, it says here 1.5 years. And uh, how many years? There, there are four quarterlies in one year. So we multiply that by four. And then we should have six periods. So we have six periods altogether. And now we just have to drop this into our formula. And again, our formula is R. And I believe it's um, bracket 1 plus i minus 1. And I, n should be there. The whole thing is divided by i. And we drop our numbers in. And we have 450. Here, bracket, bracket 1 plus 0 0.025 n is 6 minus 1 and bracket and then 0 0.025 and then we get a final number of um, 2 actually let's take a look up here yeah 28628 2874.48, which is the same number as this number here at the end of the at the end of this, the month. So this is the other way of doing you can you can do a, you can do this using a table or you can do this using just a formula. Either or. Okay, so basically how much interest does your annuity earn? Well, we know we're making, we're depositing it in. Um, okay, we're just doing this, the, just the interest alone. So we know we're depositing uh, four fifty. Because remember, you're you're earning extra money with the interest. But if you're just, just depositing money without interest, it'll essentially be four fifty multiplied by six because there's six periods, and you're investing that into six periods. So we have here two seventy. That's the interest without interest, right? And then, so, uh, sorry, this is the amount. I'm gonna, sorry, let me just erase that there. It's not the interest, it's the, this is the amount. This is A, pencil. This is A without, without, I'm gonna say W, without interest. I'm gonna say W-O-I, right, for that. And the amount with interest, so this I use double W I amount A stands for amount in this case, which is uh, two eight seven four forty eight. So if you want what the interest is, is the interest is basically the amount with interest minus the amount without interest, which is two eight. 7, 4.8, oh, 4, 8, oh, let me just erase that. Oh, 
cover the whole thing. Okay, so let me just get the eraser. Here's erase this. And get my pencil again. 0.48 minus 2700. And I believe we should get about 174.48 dollars. So this is in dollars. And that is uh, the amount with just only the interest earned. Okay, so the next one. Tom and Beth are twins and they're, they save for the retirement. Actually, before that, I just want to uh, make note of something. Because um, I saw something here that was a bit bothering me. Uh, the quarterly. Huh. Okay, I'll come back and take a look at it later. Okay, here. Here we go. Uh, Tom and Beth are twins. They save for retirement as follows. Tom deposits $1,000 at the end of each year for 40 years. So he's making regular deposits. So it's an annuity problem. And Beth is depositing $2,000 at the end of each year for 20 years. Okay. Suppose each annuity earns 8% uh, per year, but it's compounded annually. So if it's compounded annually, that makes your life a lot easier because this interest is already in annually. It's already per year. So if everything is in per year, then you don't have to change any numbers. We can do everything as is. So all we have to do is just drop the, drop the solution into our formula. So over here, I'm going to use A for amount and then underscore T for Tom. So the A amount for Tom, and then we're just going to use our, oh, before we do that, let's, what is our formula? Our formula here we're going to be using is A equals R bracket bracket 1 plus I N minus 1 bracket over I. That's the formula we're going to use, and we just drop our numbers in right away. Uh, and our numbers are uh, what was the regular payments? The regular payments was Tom. It was a thousand dollars. So Tom will be a thousand dollars. Brackets uh, one plus an I here. We don't have to do any conversions because it's already in years, and the period is in years too. So the so both of them are ready as is. So we can use 0 0.08 and it's 40 years minus one and bracket everything underneath 0 0.08. And that gives us a number of um, 259. So we 259.08. Seven or zero six, sorry, zero six. So that's the amount for Tom. We can calculate the amount for Beth. This similarly, but she has about two thousand dollars in as a regular payment, and she does it for twenty years. So we again we can use a formula one plus the interest. The interest in our case is same. Interest is the same. Is zero point zero eight. Zero eight per year, but it's for 20 years, minus one, and the interest is, he, again, over here, it's uh, 0 0.8, and then we should get a number of 91, or sorry, not 91, it's uh, 91523, 5, Two, 3.93. Okay, I think I made a mistake with this number here. Uh, I'm just looking at my notes and it's actually, no, it's, um. let me just erase that. Erase this part here. I cut off the number. Uh, so it was actually short. So 259, 056.52 sense so, so at the end of the year we have this and I can look at these two numbers I can tell that this number is larger so it looks like for 40 years even though he's uh, depositing less he's actually uh, is actually uh, making more so uh, this is the better this is the better one this is the better option
opposed to that because she only she only deposit on she was only doing it for 20 years compounding for 20 years but he's been compounding for 40 years despite the fact he's been putting less money so yeah okay so that's the end of the lesson and um yeah and i'll see you at the next one